Hello and welcome to Straight Talk, Supply Chain Insights, the podcast for your supply chain leader who is on the go and wants to be in the know. And now, your host, Laura Ciceri. Today, I'm interviewing Deanna Denton from Corning, and she has just recently attended the Supply Chain Insights Global Summit. And I got to tell you, she just gave a great presentation on digital procurement and the work that she's doing with Lyra Bismeyer. So I want to welcome you to the show today. Thank you. It was a pleasure to be here. So as you think about digital and you think about the conference, what did you learn? I learned a lot. Um, so that's a loaded question so much. One of the things I think I that's at the top of my mind is how everybody has struggled to day one when you said, let's all define digitalization and how we all define it a different way. And it really challenged something that we thought we just knew intuitively. <laughs> And we challenged ourselves to rethink it and to kind of compare notes. But the other thing that really stood out in the, the first couple of days has been just the whole concept of challenge yourself with outside in thinking is supposed to be inside out and, and unlearning just how we've done things over the last 20, 30 years, which is really difficult to do. So I think my challenge to myself and my challenge to my organization will be to continue focus on helping people unlearn so that we can relearn the right way the the digitally intuitive way and and the way that's going to give us new value levers in this new space. I think that's wonderful. Where will you start? I am really deep diving in the AI space, in cognitive learning space, because I think where I really see a lot of value leakage and productivity leakage is I think humans are still doing too much of the work. I think people underestimate the, the pending impact of labor market changes and the fact that we will need to be more productive for other reasons and just wanting to be productive and take costs out. I think we're going to hit a wall eventually where we absolutely need to um, truly dramatically increase productivity. So I'm really looking for, you know, I'm going to be focusing on AI, machine learning to kind of help get you prescriptive so I can help people do more with less, less time, less touch, and less thinking in everything that they do. Um, so they can really accelerate time and value in the day-to-day operational processes that we do. I think that's wonderful. You know, two years ago, I talked about cognitive and people scratched their head and didn't know how to get started. And now we have this whole new set of technology opportunities and people with capabilities. Now, you are from an IT background, but you're very aligned to service the business. And you know, you gave a great presentation with Laura Bismeyer, and I've never seen an IT leader and a business leader on stage and just such a lot step and collaboration. That didn't happen just easily, right? I mean, it yeah. took time. Uh, yeah. Any insights about how you make that happen uh, for the audience? I have a deep appreciation of the complexity behind the procurement space that Laura manages. Um, I spent three years as an independent contractor for IBM. And I supported the commercial organization. And I told Laura, I learned the value of really good procurement and strategic procurement being on the commercial side. Because those guys would come back and I would architect the very complicated pricing. And I was 20 or 30 price conditions deep. And my joke to them would be, next year, do you want to just give it to them for free and just save this indirect cost of me setting this up for you? I realized that procurement people were being very strategic, truly adding value, taking price out. And I knew they had done a lot of work because year over year, they were coming back with additional discounts, right? So, you know, I think procurement is underestimated in terms of the complexity. And so I appreciate the challenge of really moving the needle on maturity and digitalization in the space because I understand how complex it is. Well, you gave a great presentation. What are you the proudest of in that presentation? Um, I think I, I'm, a, I'm very proud of what Laura has accomplished in terms of truly measurable value. I think when she shared, hey, 45% cost reduction in this, you know, 35% cost reduction in that, at the end of the day, I'm still bound by the values of the business, right? That, I always start with that end in mind. And so I think I'm proud of the outcomes the most. And I'm proud of the journey of how we got there in a very collaborative way. Because to your point, a lot of people don't work in that collaborative fashion. And just for the audience, because Mm -hmm. a lot of them weren't there, what was the focus of this work in digital procurement? What were your goals and how did you get there? It was to um, align the business on the value of one global process, right? To kind of decrease the variability and decrease 
the cost to serve, increase the value of that function, take it from tactical to strategic, and extract new value. And as Laura mentioned, you know, we've hit some new heights in terms of the full value proposition that we've brought to the business. And so I think, you know, just helping move the needle and truly increase the value proposition is the focus of the conversation to say there is still value to be extracted, you know, keep your eye on the prize. And was this for direct materials, indirect materials, services, all of the above? All of the above. Okay. Yeah. Now, there's been a lot of technology coming out of the procurement space, and I feel like we've got a lot of change happening. What's your advice for technology vendors, consultants in the space? That's an excellent question. Things are changing so quickly in that area. It's actually quite head-spinning when you take it all in. There's um, a lot of options, a lot of levers you could pull, and the challenge is to figure out which ones are the right value levers for your own particular situation. And I think the number one advice is to focus on there's four kind of um, SaaS levers that I shared as part of the presentation that I think are relevant and will be relevant for a very long time, is to make sure that the product or the service that you are representing enables us to have a digital thread, keep things connected, right? Because when things aren't connected, you have value leakage and productivity leakage. People are jumping from here to there, and I'm losing value with that. So staying connected enable us to be collaborative in a world where people need to collaborate with people, they need to collaborate with software, they need to collaborate with the internet of things. We're no longer just in a world of the voice of the customer, it's the voice of the machine, the voice of the device, the tracker. I need to hear and get information from everything. And then the third point is make sure that the product or the service that you're bringing in the procurement space gets us to prescriptive and guidance. So we want all these transactions and these day-to-day -day things that you did to get to a point where you're giving guidance. And so you're because you're giving guidance and helping people accelerate time to value, then you don't have the, the productivity leakage and the value leakage. And then the last is help us get to autonomous. We all want to get there. Nobody wants to have people, people tangled up in tactical, non-value added work. The workforce is getting competitive. The millennials expect to be engaged and excited and have strategic work. And I think that they, they will play a part in that. What would you like the technology providers to stop doing? Oh, that's an even better question. I wish they would oh, stop overselling. <laughs> um, I hate the vaporware um, spiel that you come in behind sometimes and you have to kind of recalibrate the talk track that they've laid out in your absence and just say, you know, you know just let's be honest and say, what's, what's future roadmap versus what, what can you do today? Right, so I, I like an honest conversation because we don't mind co-innovating with you. So just tell us where we are in the journey. If you're gonna just give me alerts today, but you can't take that alert and automatically translate it into actions and make it actionable, and you can't get me to prescriptive, that's fine. But just let me know that that's your that's your aim, right? That you're gonna figure out how to get there. One of the things we worked on in this session was the definition of digital. Yes. Do you have a definition of digital or any insights about what digital could be for Corning? I think I enjoy a lot of the definitions that were shared, but the one that resonated with me is, is embracing a different way of thinking, a different way of working in a manner that extracts new value. And if you, if you stop it there, you can really go anywhere with from there. But the key to me is you, you gotta change the way you think, the way you work, um, you gotta embrace digital technologies and leverage them to give you differentiated value. Right at the end of the day, I think that's really all that matters. Well, many people talked about training and experiential learning. Uh, I know you've been doing a lot of things mm -hmm. at Corning. What would be your advice to people listening about how do you get your group to really start to think about how to drive differences to extract new value? How do you do that? How do you do that step change and unlearning? That's a good question, and funny enough, today over the lunch break, I was talking to a couple of folks, and I was saying, some of these processes we look at, and we have one-dimensional thinking on it, so we have to help people unlearn, and one of the ones that we were talking about was visibility platforms, and we say, people look at them and say, it's just risk avoidance, I want to get ahead of the curve on something, and I said, how do we help people understand and have a balanced approach to investments to say it's not just risk avoidance but because if you can listen for disruption and risk you can also listen for opportunity 
So I think those kind of little messages that resonate and you, you, you hit one point and you get people unlearning and relearning and having a balanced approach to value and you just start your, your skills building and your education with examples that resonate with people. Because I think it's really hard, this is moving so fast that we're going from the linear to exponential leapfrogs and everything that we do that people need examples. Right, they just don't get it without examples. So put your seatbelt on, right? Exactly. Did you get the examples here? Do you leave with more insight? I do. I do. Um, I think the group here has been amazing. I think they have very unique experiences that they've shared with us. Um, myself and Laura, and we're taking those back. For a matter of fact, you know, instead of focusing on the the conversation that was shared today, we said, hey, let's really focus on transform transformative, right? As opposed to just digitalization, let's. You know, because people get lost sometimes in the digitalization because, like, what for and why, right? Let's just talk about, you know, transformation for value, right? And I like today when the gentleman used the term instead of integrated business planning, <laughs> he changed it to something that his his customer group resonated with and he went to integrated business value, right? And I think we're going to have to do things like that so people can see the potential outcome and the potential value and they don't get caught up in the words that might be a little misleading. Well, I think supply chain has become a function and almost a bad word in some yeah. organizations, right? And so the ability to close that gap between operations and commercial teams, you know, this was Nick Lynch from Shell that change the name from yeah. integrated business planning to integrated business value. It may sound subtle, yeah. but a lot of commercial guys aren't into planning. Exactly. <laughs> and But they're into value yep. because it hits them in their bonus. Yep. And, you know, they're you know pretty commercially driven. So I think sometimes it's the subtleties. I think yep. that we as supply chain professionals and IT professionals tend to talk a lot of acronyms mm -hmm. and what I call wonk, 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 talk, you know, <laughs> things without definitions and acronyms. So the more we can drive transformational agendas yep. that they can relate to. Absolutely. Yeah, we need to keep them engaged. We need to ensure alignment. And we need to just make sure that we're all on that same track together because it's a journey, right? It's uh, it's not happening, you know, as quick as we like. And so we're going to keep pushing because that's what we need to do. So anything I didn't ask you, you want to tell the audience? Supply Chain Insights, the place to be next year at the same time. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. This is Deanna Denton with Corning, and we're going to close now. This is Straight Talk with Supply Chain Insights. Until next time. Thank you.